Okay, today we are finally going to get a look at what has been hinted at, hyped up, and eagerly anticipated for several months now. Subaru is unveiling their next generation BRZ, and there are a lot of expectations for the next iteration of a car that we already know and love. The, the BRZ and its twin, the Toyota 86, came out back in 2013 after several years of development and it really took the sports car and enthusiast market by storm. Now today, with the reveal of their next gen BRZ, we are going to see whether Subaru has been listening to the entire world of car enthusiasts and gave us what we wanted most for Christmas. That's more power, baby. There have been many rumors of Subaru putting in a larger motor, uh, like the turbocharged 2.4 liter flat four from the Subaru Ascent. The 2020 BRZ currently makes 205 horsepower and 156 pound-feet of torque. And of course we want more. Uh, we're, we're expecting a significant bump up in power from the new model. Um, and everyone is hoping for at least 250 horsepower. Um, that's what the Ascent motor uh, is making roughly, uh, or maybe up to 260, I believe. Um, and so people are expecting the same kind of numbers. What else are we expecting from the new BRZ? Well, uh, the styling is probably not going to be a huge departure from the previous design. Uh, as we know, the underlying platform is actually more or less the same. And we don't expect it to look too dramatically different uh, from the spy shots that we have seen of the car being tested on the Nürburgring. And we've even tried to take a guess as to how it would look underneath all of the camouflage uh, that the test meal was hidden behind. Um, and based on the teaser image that Subaru released of roughly half of the front end, uh, we were able to put together our prediction of what it will look like. And uh, we've shared that on our Instagram. Uh, be sure to follow us on Instagram if you haven't already. Uh, we're at 86 Drive. In terms of handling and suspension, the BRZ86 platform was already pretty fantastic. The suspension is an area that will largely be left alone since it was not a weak spot to begin with. Subaru has been making some improvements in the rest of their car lineup with regard to driver assistance and safety features. And I'd expect that the new BRZ will get some of those features too. I'm a little worried about the second generation BRZ having a little too much feature bloat. So my predictions, I don't think we're gonna see 260 horsepower or even 250 horsepower. I think that it's going to be a naturally aspirated engine. I think everyone that's been hoping for a turbo uh, it's probably wishful thinking. Uh, I think realistically it's going to be a naturally aspirated engine uh, and it'll put out 230 horsepower if we're lucky. Uh, in terms of weight, I think it'll be about 3,000 pounds uh, because of that feature bloat that I mentioned before. And in terms of pricing, it'll be just under $30,000 for the base model and then with options or for a slightly better performance package model, it'll be probably $31,000. Yep, that's my predictions. Man, it's early. Uh, but I had to wake up early in order to see this BRZ premiere. Um, so, pretty excited. It is now uh, 6 o'clock, so let's see what uh, what's happening on the website. Oh! Well, nothing's happening yet, so let's take a break. 6.05, uh, looks like, oh, the, the website has refreshed. Let's see what we got. Well, no, it looks the same. Well, my friends, I think the Subaru website is a bust. I've refreshed it a couple of times. It's now uh, 10 minutes after 6 o'clock and it still looks the same. 
they don't have any uh, announcements on the website itself about the new car. But uh, just because I was curious, I went and started looking at some other media sites, uh, some auto sites, and sure enough, they have the news. You know, obviously, some of these media sources have uh, been shown the car and, and given access, early access, uh, to the media materials and and a preview of the car. So they have all the information up. Um, I'm looking at the Autoblog website right now, and sure enough, they have published uh, photos and information about the car. So uh, let's start looking at some of that and talking about that. Um, the big news, um, I, it looks like I was pretty much on the money. Uh, 228 horsepower from a naturally aspirated uh, 2.4 liter motor, it looks like. Um, and so yeah, no turbo, unfortunately. 228 horsepower, pretty close to the 230 horsepower that I had predicted. Um, they're claiming a curb weight under 2,900 pounds, so uh, slightly better than I expected. Um, just about right. Uh, sounds like the weight hasn't changed too much from the previous model. Um, maybe a slight weight gain of about, uh, about 100 pounds. Um, and then lastly, the price. Um, yeah, where's the price? All right, stay tuned. I'll keep checking some of the other sites. Yeah, so I've continued to refresh the Subaru website. Uh, it's been 20 minutes now and still nothing on the Subaru website itself. Uh, so that's disappointing. Um, but anyway, uh, been reading up on the new car uh, based on the information that I can find online. Um, checking sources like Autoblog and Car and Driver and uh, it looks like we still don't know exactly what the price is going to be um, and not as many details revealed as we would like um, but plenty of photos so let's take a look at the new car and i'll give you my thoughts on how it looks uh, starting off with the styling all right so this is our very first image of the new 2022 Subaru BRZ. Um, not as cohesive as I had hoped, um, especially, you know, looking at the front nose here. Uh, it does have the same smiley face that we uh, have gotten used to seeing on the past BRZs. Gosh, can't believe I'm already calling it the past BRZ. Um, but yeah, the current BRZ, I should say, uh, as well as the original uh, pre-facelift 2013 to 2016 model um, they all have that happy face uh, on the front end um, and so do a lot of other cars too right like the uh, Mazdas, the Mazda Miata and um, big creases going on over here in the front end um, which I'm not sure how I feel about just yet I know, you know, we saw the upper edge of this in that preview uh, teaser image, but um, the way it all kind of comes together, I, I don't know how I feel about this opening and, and all of these angles going on here. Um, the headlights, they look good. Um, I think they looked good um, from the teaser, and uh, I think we had a lot of people saying that they kind of look Porsche-like, uh, which I kind of agree. Uh, gives it this kind of upscale look. Um, I know some people compared it to a Porsche Panamera uh, in terms of how the hood bulges uh, and creases and the headlights kind of come together. Um, so I think that part is a good look. Um, I, I think if you were to cover the bottom half of the front end and just show the upper front end, which is what they did for the teaser image, um, it really looks quite upscale and nice. Um, but then you look at the bottom half and I don't know, it kind of looks more like a Porsche Cayenne or, you know, some sort of Porsche SUV than, than a sports car to me. Um, wow, they made this uh, front side marker light 
uh, a lot bigger than it was on the previous model. Um, looks like it's twice as long vertically uh, as before. Um, the wheels, um, I like the wheels. 10 spoke is always uh, a nice look for me. I actually have a set of 10 spoke wheels on my car, the Wed Sport TC105N, and these are very reminiscent of that style of wheel, so uh, no complaints there. Um, moving back, I've got these side fenders um, openings. Pretty nice. Um, I know obviously they previewed that in some of the teaser images as well, and uh, it's reminiscent of the Lexus cars, uh, the F models. So, you know, there's the RCF, uh, which from certain angles, this car actually kind of resembles the Lexus RCF. Um, and that's not a bad thing. Uh, but you've got this sort of C-shaped opening here um, that hopefully is functional. Uh, hopefully it opens up and actually does something in terms of venting the air out of the engine compartment. Um, but, you know, something that you also see in other cars like the uh, BMW M series, uh, like the M4. Um, and so, you know, it's definitely not original. Uh, we've seen it on other cars. Um, focusing at the upper half of the car really looks not all that different from the current model. Um, maybe they tweaked the side view mirrors a little bit. Um, but in terms of the greenhouse and everything, uh, I don't see a ton of change here. Um, now, I'm sure there probably is some sort of subtle difference and, you know, perhaps the windshields aren't interchangeable. Maybe even the side glass isn't interchangeable. Um, but just looking at it from here, it looks the same. Uh, it looks like they really haven't changed much about that. Um, it's a little hard to see here, but uh, and we'll probably look at it. Uh, more closely in other photos, but it looks like they still kind of have that double bubble bump uh, feature in the roof line. Um, so no change there. Door looks pretty much the same, um, just sort of curved uh, with no creases. Uh, oh, well, actually, there's a little bit of what looks like a crease over here, um, right at the front edge uh, coming off of the front fender. So I have to take a closer look at that in uh, other photos and see if that's the case. It's a little weird to have such a tiny little crease uh, or point that ends uh, just right there. Uh, it seems a little awkward and gosh, you know, you have to manufacture a door with that tiny little, <laughs> what looks like a ding uh, in the middle of it uh, or at the front edge of it. Um, just seems kind of odd to me. Um, the door handle looks about the same. Probably didn't change much there. Can't imagine a need to. Um, let's talk about this lower door sill. Um, that's definitely a big change over the previous model. Um, huge creases going on here. Yeah, definitely different visually. Um, it basically looks like some kind of aftermarket side skirt uh, that you would buy on some body kits. Um, and I guess it kind of flows here because it, you know, goes into the front fender um, air vent that's going on over here. Um, but uh, not bad. Um, I wonder if it's going to catch a lot of dirt uh, and rain uh, during the winter seasons um, and then end up on your pant leg as you get in and out of the car. Um, that's what I've noticed tends to happen when you have a, a pronounced side skirt like this. Um, Otherwise, I think it looks pretty good. Um, it kind of flows from the very aggressive kind of creases going on at the front end of the car. Um, oh, I forgot to mention the front lip while we were looking up there. Um, not bad. I mean, it looks like it's pretty well integrated into the rest of the bumper. Uh, but the front section is made out of what looks like black uh, plastic. Um, can't tell if it's painted black or if it's just um, unpainted glossy black plastic. Uh, well, it, look, it looks kind of semi-glossy, um, so maybe it is just unpainted plastic. Wheels and tires, 
we already talked about the wheels a little bit. Tires look about the same width as before. I'll have to check the specs again on that, but I'm guessing uh, not a huge departure from the uh, 215 width tires that were on the previous model. Um, I think I did read somewhere that uh, if you get the limited model over the premium model, you do get larger wheels. Um, I think you get 18 inch wheels, uh, which might be what is shown here. Um, and then if you buy the premium trim, then you'll get the standard 17 inch wheels. Um, but either way, I'm guessing that the width of the tires isn't changing a whole lot. Maybe 215s. Actually, looking at the, the overall front end now, I'm a little surprised at how similar it looks to the Mazda MX-5 Miata. You know, from a distance, and if you blurred the picture a little bit, I might almost think that I was looking at a photo of the uh, Mazda Miata uh, with the retractable hardtop, the RF. Uh, just interesting that uh, the car has kind of evolved uh, to look a little more like its competitor. I think that's about as much as we can glean out of this first photo. Let's move on to the next one. Oh, the back end. Okay, so this is not very different from the sneak previews or artist illustrations uh, that we had seen uh, prior to the launch. The biggest thing to note, I guess, would be that the taillights have obviously changed in design. They're sort of more angular and they've got what I think a lot of people are calling reminiscent of uh, a Honda Civic taillights. So the design there is uh, a departure from uh, what we've been used to seeing uh, on the 2013 to 2020 models. But I think it's a good looking design. Overall, the back end is pretty nice. Uh, you can see that the trunk lid has its own kind of integrated ducktail spoiler to it, which I applaud. Uh, I think it looks good, and um, I think it's just the right shape. Looks like there's the third brake light has been moved to the back of this spoiler. Uh, I'm guessing that this design, uh, the spoiler or trunk lid, is going to be standard on all BRZs. Um, not just on the limited, um, but we'll have to double check that. Um, as you may know from the previous model, uh, the third brake light would have been here in the back window, and it always looked like it was kind of a, an afterthought. And um, this time around, it looks like they've integrated it into the rear trunk lid. Diffuser, still got a large black plastic diffuser area down here. Um, I know some people don't really care for that kind of design. I'm okay with it. You know, obviously a lot of cars are going with this kind of style nowadays. And it's, um, it's meant to be uh, representative or evocative of a racing car. Uh, you know, some sort of high performance car that has diffusers in the back to channel the airflow from underneath the car. Um, straight out uh, behind the car to improve aerodynamics. The exhaust tips look pretty similar to the previous model. No big change there. And what else are we looking at here? There's something a little odd going on over here on the back uh, of the rear wheel arch. Um, we'll have to take another look uh, from a side view or a closer up photo of that. I'm not sure what's happening there, but it almost looks like there's a separate piece uh, attached to the upper part of this wheel arch, and I'm not sure what the function of that is, unless it's meant to be some sort of stylistic flare, but uh, it's hard to make out here. Um, I guess you can also sort of enjoy a slightly different view of the side sills and the front fender uh, air opening over here, if it is, in fact, an air opening. Uh, again, I hope it is. I hope it's functional. Oh, I guess the other thing to note is no more uh, of the side, I don't know what they call it, the fake vent that used to be over here uh, on the upper part of the front fenders. Um, that part seems to be totally gone. It's just all sheet metal now. Um, so I don't think I'm going to miss that. Um, and it was an interesting feature, but you know, certainly not necessarily anything that you know made made the design of the car or anything. So 
uh, I don't think it'll be missed. All right, let's look at the next picture. Oh, doing some skids, as the uh, boys from Mighty Car Mods would say. Uh, yeah, drifting around, doing some donuts, having some fun, hooning the car, kind of showing off what uh, what the car is meant to do. It's rear wheel drive. Um, probably has tires that don't grip all that well. <laughs> no, uh, actually, I haven't checked to see what kind of tires uh, the new model will come with. Um, but uh, just a, a slight poke at the previous generation BRZ, which came with um, fairly low grip tires that um, a lot of people kind of uh, were derogatory towards. Um, although I personally thought that it was uh, totally fine as a base tire for the car to come with. All right, that's about all I can discern from this photo. So let's take a look at the next one. Okay, pretty much the same angle, but um, just a static shot. I don't think there's much more I can tell you about the car from this photo. Um, I'm not going to go through all of these images in this gallery um, because some of them are going to get a little repetitive. More drifting, more sideways action. Oh, this one's a nice shot. Um, I like this one a lot. Uh, the car definitely looks very Porsche-like in this angle, and uh, it looks pretty good. Uh, this angle I also like a lot, and it's interesting how you know you change the perspective on this. And this car angle looks very reminiscent of the Lexus RCF. Uh, and like I said before, that is not a bad thing. Um, it's a good-looking car. Um, and just looks so muscular here. Uh, this low angle makes it look really nice. Um, so I think when this car gets lowered, it's going to have a really nice stance to it. I approve. Another photo of the back view. Nice scenery. Need to find roads like this to enjoy driving. Looks like it might be somewhere in like Washington or Oregon, somewhere very green and rainy. Um, but more of the same shots, uh, more static shots. Again, still not sure how I feel about this front end, but I'm sure it'll grow on me with time. More drifting. Okay, now we're looking at the rear quarter view of the car and wanted to take a closer look at this thing over here. I don't know what that is, um, but it looks like it's some sort of flare on the rear wheel arch um, and maybe it's meant to sort of correspond or match something going on over here, but uh, still a little hard to make out. Um, it definitely looks like it juts out a little bit and I don't know maybe there's some sort of arrow purpose to that but um, it does look a little odd. Um, looking more closely at these tail lights yeah you know like I said before they are very sort of civic like uh, but then again there's a lot of tail light designs that are starting to look the same around these days. Um, I mean, they also look like the taillights on an Acura NSX. I'm sure no one's going to complain if you said that uh, your taillights look like the ones off an Acura NSX. I'm talking about the new one, of course, the uh, hybrid NSX, not the classic 1990s model. Uh, what is this over here? It looks like black plastic. Uh, it's a little shiny. You can see a little bit of reflection here of a palm tree. Um, I'm not sure I dig this. Uh, I mean, it's probably okay, but it looks like it's just meant to be this kind of plastic uh, piece that extends between the taillights. Um, and I feel like maybe they should have just left that painted metal. I, I don't see the point of that. Um, but it is what it is. 
Okay, yeah, there's another angle of the car. And again, looks very RCF, Lexus RCF-like in this angle. Um, very muscular, very angular looking design. Um, you can really see the shadows and the way the light plays on this uh, very aggressive, sharp crease on the uh, side door sills. Uh, and, and you can appreciate the opening here on the front fender. And looking at this feature again, you know, I guess almost, I almost want to see a 3D model of the car that you can rotate around and zoom in on this and see just what the heck is going on here. Because uh, it really, from this perspective, looks like a glued on piece of plastic. Um, and, you know, again, maybe there's some aerodynamic reason for it, but um, it just does strike me as odd. More front angle. Uh, looking at the front grill, not that different uh, design-wise from the previous generation, although I notice it's got these kind of, I don't know what to call them, just like pointy tips sticking out on the sides. Um, which probably correspond to this uh, pointy tip going on on the lower lip. Curious to see what kind of mesh or grill is in these intakes here, or if they're even functional. Um, it could well be that they're um, just filled with plastic uh, and, and some sort of weird pattern uh, that maybe doesn't even let air in. Um, but hopefully they're doing something, uh, maybe cooling the brakes or directing air uh, to the engine. Um, I wonder if there's going to be any optional fog lights that come on this car. Uh, that would be interesting to see, you know, some fog lights fill in that open space. Look at this guy over here. He looks like he's got his neck snapped back from the massive acceleration of 228 horsepower. Also have to read up on what the uh, headlights are. I'm guessing since the previous model, the 2020 BRZ has LED headlights, I'm guessing these do as well. Um, but we'll have to confirm that. A uh, closer look at the big door sill. Again, I think it's probably gonna catch a lot of dust and dirt and rainwater, that kind of thing, um, but I guess that's the price you pay for style. So, you know what? Uh, I realize I've been going on and on for quite some time now, uh, but there's just so many details to get into uh, about this new BRZ uh, that I'm just really excited to talk about. Um, but I just realized that this video is getting kind of lengthy, so I'm going to try and cut it off here. Uh, I think what we'll do is make this into a two-part series. Um, I'm just going to break it into two chunks and in the second part we're going to finish looking at some of the details uh, we'll look at some of the specs a little more closely uh, from the press release from Subaru and then uh, we'll get into some final thoughts uh, what I think about the new car and whether uh, I think you should get it whether I should get it um, just answer some of these questions until the next video which will come very shortly uh, thanks for watching